Welcome back. This is video 2A in the video series about small office networking. If you haven't seen the previous video, there's a link there in the corner where you can go back and get caught up. So what you're seeing now is a Windows 10 computer that is connected to the um, router switch combination of uh, this network I've set up. And I'm going to use an internet browser like Chrome or Internet Explorer to uh, what they call browse to the internet router or, or to the router. Uh, that's done by putting an IP address up here uh, in the uh, in the browser address bar. A lot of the times it's going to be something like 192.168.0.1. It might be 192.168.1.1. It could be .254. You can try some guesses. Those are those are three of my of my pretty good guesses. But if you want to find out for sure, um, if DHCP or, or in other words, if the router is ready to go out of the box, and a lot of times they are, you can you can just simply launch a command prompt, which is this little um, little DOS prompt. If, if you if you need help finding that, use your search tool. Search for command or CMD. And you get this little black box. It's called a. If you guys, if you're old enough to remember the DOS days, this is what it is. It's just a DOS, a DOS window. And uh, you type in the command IP config. That's I P C O N F I G. And then you hit return. And when it shows you your Ethernet adapter, you'll see this numbers here. These these IP addresses. These these little these little um, uh, three uh, four part numbers are called IP addresses. Anyway, what you're looking for is the default gateway, and the default gateway here is 192.168.0.1. So your default gateway is is 90% of the time is synonymous with your with your router's address. So whatever you're seeing here for the default gateway is the is the number you want to put into the uh, into the internet browser to get to your router. So I logged to my router. Uh, this is a Netgear uh, WNR2005. It is a small office or consumer grade router. What I'm not covering, at least not yet, is I'm not covering enterprise grade routers like you know Cisco or Juniper um, or uh, Fortinet. This is really just focused on small office networking, trying real hard to keep this as simple as possible for everybody. So let me talk about what we're going to need to do in this router to, to get this going. There's a lot of little buttons and settings and options inside the router, but we're, the essentials we need are three things. We need to establish our internet connection, or what's also known as a wide area network connection. So that is the internet's connection to the router, not to us, just to the router. The second thing we need to do is we need to make sure that our router is acting as a DHCP server. So a DHCP server usually is enabled by default on a router, but just in case it's not, we need to check it out, make sure it's, it's set up properly. And then lastly, we need what's known as DNS, Domain Name Services. Now, again, I'm really trying to focus on not diving deep into the details to get bogged down with technical discussions. Just know that DNS is a necessary component that allows us to take domain names like yahoo.com or google.com and lets the router look up the IP address for those. So real quick, let's have a real quick discussion on IP addresses. An IP address is that four part number that I was talking about before, and you've got a few different types. You've got internal and external. Internal ones are used like 192.168, uh, and then something, something. So for instance, 192.168.0.1 is typically a router address. Uh, 192.168.0.100 or 101 or 150 is typically, you know, for some kind of internal device like a PC or um, a Wi-Fi antenna or a printer. And then you've got external IP addresses. Those are the IP addresses that the routers usually get that allow them to connect to the rest of the of the uh, the, I, the internet at large. And those are usually going to be something other than a 192 address. So they typically start with like a 70 or 68 or something like that. All right. And then, and then a DHCP scope we'll come back to in just a minute. All right, so let's go back to that router and check these things out. So your interface could look any number of ways different than what I've got. Every brand is going to be a little bit different. Every router within that brand might be a little bit different. But armed with that knowledge that there's three things we're looking for, which is, which is our, our Internet connection, our, our DHCP server, and our, our DNS, 
we need to hunt those things out and get them established, make sure they're working so that we can we can have our PCs on, on the network. So in this one, I could probably go here to internet. Let's see, it's asking for my login and password, which I've already put that in and saved. Your login and password information should be included with your router documentation. Uh, let's see, so what have I got here? Okay, so I can see I've got an internet IP address. I'm, a, I'm set up to, to get dynamically. If you were given an IP address, it was after the, the cable installer or DSL installer, or if you got a letter uh, when you got your stuff that gave you a static IP address, you would put that information uh, in here. Let me move that over a little bit for you so you can see it better. Um, this, this, remember I said that, you know, numbers that started other than 192 were usually, you know, uh, external IP addresses. You would put that information in here. This stuff is already populated for us because I've got get dynamically from ISP, meaning that as soon as my router is powered on, it looks to the modem to get the information. And uh, by the way, just so you know what my topology looks like, or, or in other words, how I, I'm connected, is in this example, I'm using a one port modem, which is this box right here with a red cable, all right, which then goes to a router switch combination, which is this net gear here in the middle. So the red cable goes into the internet or wide area network port. That just happens to be a yellow one, so you can kind of see it differently. And then these four ports above that are, are switch ports, which go out to the computers. So I'm going from the modem to the router, and then from the router's switch ports over to my computer. That's my topology. I'll probably make some other videos talking about the different types of topologies and, and give you some different examples, but that's what we're doing right now. All right, so also what you can do is when you've got your information in there is that usually there's a spot where you in your router where you can get like a status so you can see if you're connected or not. So let me see if I can find us a status report. Usually they've got something that kind of says like, you know, okay, you're connected or you're not connected. Okay, yeah, right here on the front page. See how it says my status is good? So I can't really move on until that says good. So if it says not connected or bad, then I've got something going on with my internet connection that I need to fix. All right, then next I need to see what's going on with my DNS server. Like I said, most of the time that's usually already enabled by default. So, in fact, you might even find that if you connect this stuff together, you might just find out that you're already connected to the Internet without even having to do anything. But, uh, you know, the, the point of this video is to kind of help you understand how this stuff works and if it's not working, how to, how to get it going. Let's see. So what I'm hunting for right now is, um, is a DHCP server. I'm not seeing it here in basic, so I'm going to switch over to advanced. And um, I guess I could look here in setup. That might be a good place to start. Okay, let's go to setup. Let's go to LAN setup. So WAN, wide area network, is your connection to the outside world through the from the router's perspective. The LAN, local area network, is all the PCs and devices inside your network. So in LAN setup, I can see that I've got um, an IP address established as, as kind of my base network address. Uh, okay, right here, use router as DHCP server. So you're looking for something like that. And then what it'll do is it'll say starting address and ending address. That's where we got to talk about the scope. So I'll go back over here real quick. All right, so down here at the bottom, a DHCP scope is basically a pool or a collection of available IP addresses that can be dynamically assigned to devices on your computer. Now you can choose to statically assign IP addresses to your computer, but we're right now we're just focused on using DHCP, meaning that any device that's plugged in to our network will will request that the router give them a available IP address from that pool to use while we're on the network. So for instance, if I go look at my command prompt again, um, CMD, and I do IP config, I can see that the address I got was 192.168.0.142. So that's the address that I was given. All right, I may boot this computer up again tomorrow, and that address might be different. All right, and you can set these to where they're permanent. We'll talk about that a little bit further down the road. All right, so, um, so I've got my DHCP server set up. I've got my scope set up. I'm good here. So now lastly is I need to check on DNS again. A lot of times this stuff is already ready to go before you even have to uh, do any of this. But in the event that yours, you know, you're troubleshooting or something like that, 
that that's the purpose of this video. So let's see what we got. Something about DNS. Let me check my LAN again. Let's see here. If I got anything about DNS. Nope, don't see it there. Let's see if I've got it under internet. It might be in that wide area network setup. Ah, right here. Domain name server, DNS, get automatically from ISP. So what, what's happened is, is that just like the way I got my wide area network address automatically, I'm also being assigned DNS information automatically. I can, however, choose to, to say, you know what, I don't want to use these. I want to use Google's DNS, which is kind of something a lot of IT guys use when they want to, um, you know, if they're troubleshooting or they just want to circumvent the local Internet carrier's uh, DNS because sometimes it doesn't work right for them. So you can choose to use a different set of numbers uh, if you want. Bottom line is we have to have uh, DNS in order for our um, our internet browser to work properly. All right, now if you do make some changes, then you need to make sure that you save those changes. So I'm going to do an apply, and then of course what it'll do is it'll it usually reboots the router, reloads the router. So for temporarily, it won't have internet access. Okay, so lastly, before we wrap up this video, let's talk a little bit about ensuring that we've got connectivity. So one of the most obvious ways we can do it is just simply, you know, uh, open up an internet browser, type in something. Don't use your home page to test this. Use something like, uh, you know, some website you haven't been to in a while, because a lot of times your home page tends to be cached, I mean it's like temporarily saved. So if you use some website you haven't gone to in a while, then you'll see, you know, like a, a uh, all right, we don't want to listen to that music. Okay. All right, so I've got connectivity. However, if you're getting like a page timed out, then let's go over to the command prompt and let's check some basic things. Uh, in the command prompt, one of the things you can do is, is you know, obviously you can do the IP config and make sure that you're getting one of those pooled addresses. Make sure that you've got a gateway. If this IP address is 19, um, 168, something like that, that means you're you're not connected. Because 168 usually is the address you get when there's when there's when there's no connection. So check your wiring. Um, so, uh, so I can, I can, for instance, I can ping P-I-N-G space yahoo.com. Now, if I do P-I-N-G space yahoo.com, I get replies. That's what these little, these little, let me see if I can make this bigger. No, the text doesn't get any bigger. Sorry about that. Um, and, uh, is there a way to adjust the font? Okay. Anyway, um, so if it comes back and says, like, if I do, like, say a fictitious, address oh there is such a thing as okay <laughs> i was going to try to find something that i know didn't exist let's do this ping uh, okay see if you get something like it can't find it that probably means that you're not connected properly the other thing you can do is you can ping that google dns address i gave you earlier uh ping 8.8.8.8 and what that does is if you get replies from the number but you're not getting replies from like the domain names like yahoo.com then it means you you've got you know basic internet connectivity and you've got IP connectivity, but there's something wrong with your DNS. So go back and check that. Anyway, so I've just said a lot and it's been about 10 minutes. So I want to wrap this up. However, I'm going to come back to this in a few other examples uh, using some different types of of network setups. But uh, after this, we're going to move on to video three, which will be uh, to talk about um, uh, common file sharing or, or having a common file storage so that uh, you can share files across the, uh, the network. Okay, hope that helps you out and look forward to the next video and uh, thanks for watching.